Why do Fibonacci numbers occur in pine cones? By Victoria Lee. Have you ever picked up a pine cone and wondered why it looks the way it does? It turns out a pine cone consists of clockwise spirals or counterclockwise spirals depending on how you look at it. The number of clockwise and counterclockwise spirals are always approximately equal to consecutive Fibonacci numbers, or something similar, such as Lucas numbers. Fibonacci numbers are numbers in the sequence 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. Each number is the sum of the two previous numbers. Lucas numbers are numbers in the sequence 1, 3, 4, 7. Either way, each number is the sum of the two previous numbers. In this case, our pine cone is spanned by approximately 8 clockwise and 13 counterclockwise spirals. It actually has 9 clockwise spirals, which makes it not perfect. <gasps> But that's okay because it's approximately 8 and approximation is what matters, as you will see next. The ratio of consecutive Fibonacci numbers is an approximation for phi equals 1.618 equals 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 equals the solution to x equals 1 plus 1 over x, which is the solution to x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0 or x equals 1 plus square root of 5 all over 2, equals the golden ratio, equals the most irrational number of all. It also turns out that pine cone leaves are spaced at angles of 1 fifth of a circle apart. That's 360 over phi degrees equals 222.5 degrees, or going the other way, 360 over phi squared degrees equals 137.5 degrees apart. We can verify this on a real pine cone. The leaves are spaced 222.5 degrees apart in the order 1, 2, 3, etc., etc., etc. This pine cone's missing some leaves though, so let's verify another one. But why does the golden ratio occur in pine cones, and why do Fibonacci numbers occur in pine cones? It turns out that not only pine cones, but most plants grow according to the golden ratio, and all plants do this, or something similar, to maximize the spacing between leaves, or petals, and so on. Don't believe me? Watch Vihart's highly thorough and entertaining proof on YouTube. It's in three parts, and a clickable link to the next video appears at the end of each video. Unfortunately for you and me, YouTube can no longer add clickable links, so you'll just have to search for the title. Basically, in order to maximize the spacing of leaves, each leaf must be treated equally, so they must be spaced by a constant angle, which is some fraction of a circle apart, say 360 over x degrees apart. If x is a rational number, then it can be written as m over n, where m and n are relatively prime whole numbers. Relatively prime means having no common factors, which just ensures the fraction is simplified as much as possible. But then, every m leaves would result in... a collision, that is... overlapping leaves, which results in less space for the leaves to grow. To avoid collisions, x must be impossible to write as an integer divided by an integer. In other words, x must be irrational. And the more irrational x is, the more we avoid collisions. So the best way to avoid collisions is to set x as phi, the most irrational number of all. And that is why growing by one phiith of a circle apart maximizes the spacing between leaves. But what does this have to do with Fibonacci numbers? It turns out that having Fibonacci numbers of spirals also maximizes the spacing between leaves just as Vihart predicted, and now we prove why. By the way, the production of this video was delayed by a month because apparently no one had proven this before and I couldn't come up with the proof until I visited my cousin Mengyuan and Ruby in Boston who inspired me to figure it out. The key to the proof is that growing by one fifth of a circle clockwise is the same as growing by one phi squareths of a circle counterclockwise. Growing by one fifth of a circle clockwise this initially fills up an entire circle after every five leaves starting after the first leaf, forming five spirals. 
Note that the next leaf in each spiral is offset from the previous leaf by a distance of 5 leaves or an angle of 360 over phi times 5 mod 360 equals 32.5 degrees. So counting along spirals, we have 1, 6, 11, 16, 3, 8, 13, 5, 10, 15, 2, 7, 12, and 4, 9, 14. Since the offset is in the clockwise direction, this forms clockwise spirals. And for those of you who don't know, mod just means the remainder of the first number divided by the second number. Growing by 1 phi squareths of a circle counterclockwise, which is just the same thing, the leaves in the spirals are offset counterclockwise by the angle 360 over phi squared times 8 mod 360 equals 20.1 degrees, corresponding to a distance of 8 leaves, forming 8 spirals initially. As the size of the pine cone increases, the distances to offsets increase, so the number of spirals increases from 5 and 8 to 8 and 13 to, for a big enough pine cone, 13 and 21. But one thing doesn't change. The leaves always grow 1 feet of a circle clockwise, or 1 feet squareths of a circle counterclockwise apart, so the clockwise spacing is always phi times the counterclockwise spacing, so it always takes phi times as many leaves to create a counterclockwise offset than to create a clockwise offset, and so there are always phi times as many counterclockwise spirals as clockwise spirals. For example, for a clockwise growing pine cone, one spiral clockwise corresponds to 1 times phi equals 1.618 is approximately 2 spirals counterclockwise. 2 spirals clockwise corresponds to 2 times phi equals 3.236 is approximately 3 spirals counterclockwise, 3 spirals clockwise corresponds to approximately 5 spirals counterclockwise, and so on. Fibonacci numbers of spirals work best because they give approximately whole numbers of spirals, and the larger the Fibonacci numbers, the better the approximations. But too many spirals makes the pine cone too heavy, so that's probably why most pine cones have 8 spirals in one direction and 13 in the other. Similarly, for a counterclockwise growing pine cone, there are always phi times as many clockwise spirals as counterclockwise spirals. Either way, main point. Leaves growing one phi of a circle apart always create phi times as many spirals in one direction as the other. And this results in a self-similar object, meaning no matter how much it grows outward or inward, it always has the same proportions. And this maximizes the spacing between leaves. This is true not just for pine cones, but also for fruits, vegetables, flowers, and in general, circular growing things with leaf-like parts. That's cool. To maximize spacing, just use phi, the divine ratio that's truly divine.